Hello again, this is UML Operator. In this session, we're going to be talking about keyboard shortcuts. And I realize when I'm demoing in these videos, I often use shortcuts and forget to tell you about them. Every once in a while, you'll see me insert some keystrokes to use, and I try to tell you what I'm doing, but I'm getting asked a lot how I move so fast in Sparks, and often it's because I'm using shortcuts. So we're going to do a quick view of Sparks EA shortcuts and get you to the places where you can learn them yourself. So as I do in other training videos, as I get you to the Spark Help Center. So you're going to go to Start tab all the way over here to Help. You're going to hit this down carrot and we're going to open up Help. And we should be at the Sparks EA Welcome page. From here, we're going to go to the Application Desktop link in Left Navigation. And we're simply going to go down to Keyboard Shortcuts. And here's everything, almost everything, you need to know about Keyboard Shortcuts. Another place you can go from the Start tab over in Help, we're going to hit the Down Carrot again. You can open Keyboard Accelerator Map. And so when we open this, we get a dialog box that pops up that allows us to look by category the various shortcuts that may be available to you, All right? So start, some interesting shortcuts here, and I can keep going down, construct, and so on. Here are my most used keyboard shortcuts for Sparks Enterprise Architect. So pause here, take a screenshot, write them down. I'm gonna step through each one of these one at a time. So Alt plus G. This is one that I use quite a bit. I can select any element here and I can hold down the Alt key plus G and it immediately finds the element that I wanted in my browser. My browser's over in the upper right, yours may be in the left or somewhere else, Alt G. The next one is Alt plus the Enter key. So I can select an element, hold down the Alt key, hit the Enter key, and it pops up the properties window for me. Now this is much faster to get to when you're in your local environment. In the cloud environment, we're bringing up this dialog might be have some might have some latency. I have my notes over in the upper lower right rather with properties, so I'm able to look at properties here. But you can see there's a lot of difference between this property window. See, this is the properties dialog that gives me the notes, the name. It gives me a lot more metadata that I can find here than I can find from the properties window because notes window is separate from properties, element properties versus tag properties. And there's a lot of other properties to look at. Control plus C. We use this everywhere. This is copy, control C. And then normally when we're pasting, it's control V, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So control C. I can hold down the mouse button, select what I want to copy. I can copy it, and now it's in cache. And then we can use a shift insert, which we're going to talk about next, for inserting the exact same elements. Or we can use control, shift, and V to copy as new. Let me show you those both next. Let's do shift insert first. We're going to copy what we just selected here. We're going to go to a target model and we're going to hit shift and insert. And it brings those elements in from that exact space. And however you have this diagram window uh, configured, and in this case, you can see I'm exposing everything. I haven't turned it off. It's literally giving me an instance of the exact same. So if I hit Control Alt G. I'm going to Internet. If I go to this example and I hit Alt G, I'm on the same element. Load balancer Alt G, I'm on the same element. Load balancer Alt G, I'm on the same element. All right. So that shift insert is reusing the global unique IDs and the elements from where they are, and it's pasting them in any targeted diagram, regardless of its package or namespace. 
All right, let's go ahead and delete these from this diagram. We're going to go to where this diagram is, find in browser. It's a blank diagram, empty package. We've already got the elements that we want to copy selected. And what we're going to do is, and in cache, we're going to hit Control, Shift, and V. You get this dialog box that pops up that says, Paste elements as new. And you can select here, you can change your mind which items you want to paste. You simply by unchecking them. And you can include connectors or not include connectors. Now these are bringing these elements in under their own global unique ID. So let's just go ahead and select paste. And here it goes, it's pasting them into the SQL instance. And there you go. Now we have these elements if I hit Alt G on the internet, you can see it's in its own package. These are completely separate elements from it. If I go to internet here, Alt G, they're in this package and namespace. So they have different global unique IDs. In properties, if I go down to project, you can see that the GUID ends in ASF. And if I go to this element, the GUID ends in A93. So these are completely new goods. And then I can go in here from here from what I've taught you and you can turn things off uh, to show in the uh, diagram that you want to show and you can do all sorts of other things that I've taught you in other videos. Now what's interesting about the last three that I've talked about, Control C, Shift Insert, Control Shift V, those aren't in the Sparks help page anymore, at least I can't find them, nor are they in the accelerator map that I showed you as well. So these are ones that I've used for years. I'm not sure whether Sparks is going to deprecate or replace them. There certainly are other ways to uh, paste as a link or paste as new, but those three I use quite often and I just use them naturally and don't think about them. So. Those are ones I think you're going to use a lot as well. The next one is control plus the space bar. And this one is very useful if I'm on an element and I'm modeling and I'm not focused on notes, which I keep in the lower right. I might be somewhere else like traceability where I have focus on something. If I go on a particular element like the e-commerce site here and I hit control in the space bar, it brings up a notes window completely separate from this notes window, right? So it brings up this notes window. So that's control space, quickly brings it up. I can make edits really fast. Now I don't have the styling toolbar up at the top that you see over here, but it's a very quick way to bring up an element notes section and then, you know, make some edits if you wish to, all right? Now the next one is control plus enter key or control plus two. And this just gets you to the properties window very quickly. So, you know, if you're lost around, you have lots of windows open and you want to very quickly get to the properties window, when you select an element, if you hit control enter, it takes you right to the properties window, right? So very, very useful uh, when you want to get to properties as quickly as possible and you've got a lot of different windows and you don't want to restart your, um, particular layouts to get back if you lost your properties window. Control plus enter or control plus two, I will get you there quickly. All right, so from traceability, control plus two, takes me to the properties window. So I can get the element properties and tag properties. The next one is function key eight or F8. So I can select any package I want to report on. I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to hit F8 key and it is going to bring up the generate documentation dialog box and I can run reports very quickly from here when I choose the templates. Otherwise, I have to go to publish and then I have to go over here and then I have to click on this and the dialog box pops up. But hitting function key eight brings up this box anywhere you are based on the package that you're on. So if I want to report on this package, I hit F8, comes up. I verify what package I'm on, tells me right here. I can certainly select another package, but I'm good with this, and we're ready to print a report. The next one is 
Control plus the Alt key plus the E key. Control, Alt, and E. And when I do that, I select the package that I want to export. Control, Alt, E, and the export package dialog box pops up. I can pick where I want the this package to be exported to and what options or formats that I want to use and so on. So I'm not going to demo that right now. I do that in another video. So Control, Alt, and E. And the other side is wherever I want to be, if I exported this out and I want to bring it into another package, I hit Control, Alt, and I for import, and it brings up the dialog box to import whatever package that I want to import from into the package that I chose. And then I have options here. I'm not going to do it. I talk about export and import in other videos. So that is Control Alt E and Control Alt I. Right. The next one is Control plus Alt plus B for baseline. So this is manage baseline. So I select any package I want to manage baseline on. I hit Control Alt and B, and it brings up the baseline dialog box. And then from here, I can create a new baseline. Just make this 02 on this date and time. And now we've got a new baseline of this particular item done at this time. I can show differences. I can make changes. I can fall back to other uh, baseline documents and so on. I show you that in a baseline video, but it's Control, Alt, and B to manage your baselines. And the last one that I use is F5 or Function Key 5. And I primarily use this one when I'm in a cloud team environment where other team members might be working on the packages that they own that are relevant to the packages that I'm working on. And that's simply selecting a package, hitting the function key. And what this does is it refreshes the selected package in the browser window. So you can see any changes that have been made by your team members during the period of time you've been working. I hope this video has helped you. I get asked a lot of questions about shortcuts, how I learned the shortcuts, etc. And you can see the, the accelerator, which I talked about in the beginning of the video. These are all applying to the default layout. In a later video, I'll show you how to create and customize your own shortcuts for your own perspectives and layouts. Thanks very much for watching this. Happy modeling, and I'll talk to you all later.